Hi everyone, uh, today I'd like to talk about the Calavella and this is by Elias Lonrot MD. I hope I pronounced that properly. In the images you'll see an, uh, an actual egg as one of my props in the video. I hope that's not offensive to Finnish people. Um, just the egg is one of the really beautiful creation stories in the Calavella. I really, the creation stories from the Calavella is some of my favorite for creation stories that I've read this year and I wanted to showcase that. I hope it doesn't look too literal. I hope it looks charming and adorable and also same with the Angry Birds prop um, because they were created by Finnish people so I hope those two are not offensive. Uh, my apologies if they are. Um, just let me know, leave a comment. A polite comment of course. So let's get into it. The Calavella is a collection of folk songs that were compiled in two stages. The first stage was completed by Elias Lonrot, MD, and that work is called the Old Calavella. Elias lived from 1802 to 1884. The second stage was completed by a younger song collector named David E. D. Irapaeus. David lived from 1820 to 1884. The first and second stages were completed in 1835 and 1849. The material collected for stage one was about half of what was collected for stage two. It's called the Calavella after a legendary region where these songs came from. So this mytho mythical region may or may not have actually existed. Many of the songs were collected from the actual region called Karelia or the Karelian Finnish where they currently live, uh, the people currently live. Once it was compiled, the Finnish people were able to celebrate having their own cultural history and identity separate from Russia, who was a dominating presence over Finland for some time. Many of the folk songs within this collection preserve the old customs and way of life of these Finns of old folklore times. The result is when reading this, cutting wood and cooking by the fire are treated as everyday occurrences. There's even a scene where old-fashioned beer is crafted by a lady. There are many scenes with magic and people changing into animals. There are scenes for fishing and many moments where people deliberately sit and think for a moment. It's very strike striking how thought is a key theme in this book. It also prevents many extra problems from happening as well, but not always. The translation in this blue book on your screen makes some changes from the Finnish original language because they couldn't fit naturally into the structure of English. The Finnish poetic meter is measured differently than in English. I'm not sure what's unmeasurable about it. In the past, English versions could have a similar Finnish line structure with trochaic four beat, mainly eight syllable line. But the translator should leave out the heavy use of alliteration that exists in the Finnish version because of how limited the English choice, the English word choice would be. With this in mind, the current translation here is in prose rather than poetic meter and uses idiomatic English where appropriate for conveying the original thoughts in a more natural sounding English style. So the translation is fairly literal when trying to maintain the feel of the original finish whenever it's natural to do so. The translator doesn't force the language in any way. An interesting feature of the singing traditions of Old Icelandic, Serbo-Croatian, and Finno-Karelian is they invent nonsense words to fill out the meter. A common one would be the English equivalent of um. It's spelt in English as on, perhaps pronounced as on. They also coin new words to maintain the rhythm or to produce a jingling effect. These words often parallel the real word they allude to. The translator 
tried to reproduce this effect in the English translation to keep the fun quality of the original. So an example, it's in poem 47, lines 259, 279, 299, and on page 317. It features this with the phrase, to swim about, wham about. So I'll read the lines from 271 to 279 from poem 47 to give you a sense of what this translation sounds like and the slight wackiness that is the Kalevala. A little time passed. Agony came to the one who swallowed it. Pain to the one who devoured it. Great anguish to the one who ate it. It swam about, wham about. It swims for one day. It swims a second along the side of Whitefish Islands. Among salmon scaries, past the tips of a thousand headlands, along the coves of a hundred islands. Every headland gave advice. Every island had a message. There is not in the tranquil water, in agonized Lake Alu, anyone to swallow the miserable fish, to down the wretched one burning in the agony of fire, in the torments of the flame. Overall, the Kalevala is a fast, fun read with many scenes of absolute bygone days where fishing and cook stoves were the norm. There's a variety of different stories where we follow the few main characters who are on a quest for something specific. From reading it, we'll get to see Finland's amazing creation story that's unlike anything else that I've read. Partially because taking a moment to reflect is included in their creation story. There's magic, the creation of beer, and events that occur out of the blue. There's also some phrases of wisdom, and overall is just a romping good time. So I hope you enjoyed this. If this epic interests you, it's certainly a great one to read. Um, thank you very much for listening and have a good day. Bye everyone.